Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't CPAC absolutely bloody fantastic? I've got to tell you, this is somewhat of a nerd dream of mine. I've been coming to CPAC now for eight years and have wanted to stand here and wax lyrical for a very long time. But you have a better speaker, so I will keep this brief. Uh, my name is Raheem Kassam. I'm the editor-in-chief of Breitbart's London Bureau. And uh, I was born in West London uh, into a Muslim family. And I am now proud to say that I am a conservative. I am, I am a proud Englishman. And I am a robust Americophile. But sometimes when people meet me, they ask me, oh, Raheem, that's a, that's a Muslim name. Do you, uh, do you make the Hajj? Do you do the pilgrimage? And I say, yeah, I, I, I make the pilgrimage every year to the Gaylord National Convention Center. <laughs> <laughs> to be amongst people like you, the people who have made such a massive difference. You have changed the world, ladies and gentlemen. But there is a lot of the world that still needs changing. You know, I was in Sweden last week. Sweden! You heard of Sweden, right? You heard a lot about Sweden in the past few days. Uh, 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 absolutely extraordinary. I want, to, I want to talk to the back of the room for a second, the media at the back of the room for a second. You could do better than that, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Look. Uh, I was in Malmo, I was in Husby, I was in Rosengard, I was in Stockholm, I was in uh, uh, these no-go zones. And actually, if you, if you want a, a little bit more about that, if you go down to the Regnery stand downstairs, uh, I've got a book coming out on it. And I was there in these no-go zones, and I came back, and we were talking about Sweden, and Donald Trump's talking about Sweden. And I was in Paris too, and I was in Brussels and Molenbeek too. And you guys at the back, you just don't get it. You don't go there, you don't see what's going on. Get your heads out of your rears. I'm sorry, they're not all like that. Um, but I'm here to introduce a man today uh, who really changed my life in a very significant way, who changed my country in a very significant way, and I would argue changed the world in a very significant way. You know, last year we had Brexit. Uh, that's too big. I'm too big up there. I don't like that. Um, last year we had Brexit, and, and Brexit was spearheaded by a man who loves his country, who wants an end to uncontrolled mass migration, who wants our secure borders and who wants us to be a proud, sovereign nation again. I used to work for that man. He, was a member of the, he is a member of the European Parliament. He worked tirelessly, traveled up and down the country, sometimes speaking to rooms of three or four people at the beginning of his career, just to have his message heard. 20 years ago, this movement started. He's been a mentor to me. He's been a friend to so many of us. And he's also been really a father figure to so many of us. He has survived cancer. He has survived a car crash. He has survived a plane crash. He has survived the BBC, CNN, the establishment, the European Parliament. And he's also a very demanding man. He's a man who, when I worked for him, would be just like Donald Trump, just like President Trump, would call at the most inopportune time. Hold on a minute. Yes, Nigel, I'm nearly done. I'm nearly done. Thank you. Yes, yes. Sorry, Mr. Brexit. Mr. Brexit. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brexit, Nigel Farage, my good friend, please welcome him to the stage. <laughs> 